Hello, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will see how to install OSB and we will also configure domain and create cluster. Let's quickly see the architecture. So we have two machines with us. In the first machine, we have already installed Oracle WebLogic server. In the second machine, we are running our database. So if you want to see how to install Oracle WebLogic server in database, you can refer my previous videos. In this video, we are going to install Oracle service bus in our machine number one. So for OSB installation will be, first we will require Java. Then we need a WebLogic infrastructure. After that, uh, we can install FMW products on that. In our case, it will be Oracle service bus. Then we will configure our product schemas using RCU and finally we can configure domain. So as I mentioned in this video, we are going to install Oracle service bus. Then we'll configure product schemas and then we'll create domain and we'll also see how to create cluster. So let us see how to install OSB. So for that, I have already downloaded OSB installables from eDelivery uh, website. I will put that link in the description so that you can refer and download. To install this, we will run Java minus jar and MW jar. And we will change our inventory path and click OK. This is the welcome screen for the installation. Click next. Here we will uh, skip auto updates and click next. We will have to provide Oracle home. You can also browse it. This is our Oracle home. You can click view button to see how many products are installed under Oracle home. So here you can see we have installed Oracle Fusion middleware infrastructure. Click next. This is fine. Next. All checks are OK. Click Next. Here you can save a response file so that you can install silently in the future. Click Install. So our OSB installation is completed. Click Next and you can finish it. So let us verify. Go to Oracle Home. And here you can see we have OSB folder. So OSB is installed now. Now let us create product schema using RCU. So that uh, below is the path. So basically it is Oracle Home, then Oracle Common and Bin. You can run RCU from here. So this is the welcome screen for RCU. Click next. We get couple of options here for create repository and drop repository. Under create repository, we have again three options. If you have DBA privileges, you can go with the first option. If you don't have DBA privileges with your schema, you can prepare a scripts and you can ask your DBA to run it. After that, you will have to run product load separately. So we have DBA privileges with our schema. We will go with the first option. Click next. Here we will mention our host name and rest of the details. So prerequisite checks are fine. Click OK. Here we will select SOA suit and all relevant schemas are selected with that. Here we will give a prefix. So I am giving OSB as a prefix here. Click next. All checks are fine. OK. So in this screen we can give same passwords for all schema or we can mention separate passwords for separate schemas. Uh, so we will be giving same password for all schema. Click next. Here we get different profiles for our installation. So if you are installing for production environment, uh, you can select large profile. 
the benefit of using large profile is it will auto partition all the table spaces uh, for our video we are going to use a small profile and we are not going to integrate this with healthcare so we will keep this as no and click next as a screen we get manage table spaces if you want to configure something related to table spaces you can utilize this space we will continue with the defaults okay. checks are fine okay and again you can save response file for rcu as well so that you can create product schema using silent mode uh, click create our schema creation is completed we can close it let us configure our domain and create cluster for osb for domain creation we will have to run config.sh to find config.sh you can go to oracle home then oracle common common bin here we will be creating new domain for osb and i will be changing this location you can keep defaults as well next here we will be selecting oracle service bus reference configuration and all related check boxes will be ticked so enterprise manager is enabled here and uh, along with that wsm policy is there grf is there and uh, we have coherence cluster extension as well click next click next so this is our application location we will be changing this as well click next this is admin user for the domain put your password and click next we will go with the production mode and we will select our jdk lo location here so i am selecting soft link for the jdk here we will enter user details for the database which was created as part of RCU, enter your prefix here, and STB stands for standard table. Get RCU configuration. Click next. So this is the list of data sources which will be created as part of this installation. If you want to change password or usernames here, you can utilize this space. We'll click next. Make sure all are tested successfully. Click next this is for key store configuration we are not configuring any key store at the moment you can click next here we will be selecting admin server node manager and topology next you can mention listen address here and uh, you can also change listen port if you want to enable ssl you can take this checkbox but we will go with the defaults next give username password for the node manager next. so osb server is already added here so we'll click next otherwise you can add a server and uh, you can also change port number and listen address as per your requirement we only have one server but just to see how to create cluster we will be creating a cluster here click next these templates are related to dynamic cluster creation which we are not creating so i am deleting it click next you can click next here as well and add server into cluster click next we will go with the defaults or coherence cluster here next here we will be adding a unix machine we will also mention group name and username and in node manager listen address also i am giving host name for the machine you can give any name here but just to identify our host name i am giving this name here we'll add admin server and manage server inside our machine click next we are not going to create virtual targets so click next we are also not creating partitions so we can click next 
and finally we can create our domain so our osb domain is successfully configured click next so this is our admin server url and this is our domain path we can click finish let us start our weblogic server so for that go to domain home and run start weblogic.sh so this is prompting us for username and password so to get rid of this we will create a boot.properties file So let's cancel this and go to servers admin server create security folder there inside security we will create boot.properties file here we will enter our username and password let us start it again this time we will use no hook command so that it will run in the background we can check no hook dot out for the logs you can see it is not asking us for the password now so our admin server is up and running let us see we are able to access admin console we'll put username password here so this is our home page for admin console go to environments and server here you can see we have admin server and we have osb server one here which is as part of osb cluster and uh, in the machine name we have our host name and this is the state of server if you want to install osb server one you will have to start node manager so let us start node manager first so this is the path where you can find start node manager.sh it is under domain home and pin we will again use no hook command to start node manager and you can check no hook dot out file for the logs our node manager is listening let us start our osb server let us also try to open enterprise manager url so this is sign in page for enterprise manager let us log in into enterprise manager we are able to log in into enterprise manager let us also try to log in into service bus console our service bus console is accessible let us try to log in yes we are able to log in into service bus console as well here we have designer tab uh, where you can see all the projects and here we have admin tab where you can find and replace or create configuration file that's it for this video in the next video we will see how to install weblogic server 14c we will see how to configure domain and create cluster and we will also see how to upgrade java from one version to another so in this video we have seen how to install oracle service bus and we have also covered how to configure a domain and create cluster inside that if you found this video helpful please like my video subscribe my channel and click the bell icon for the further notification also leave a comment and suggest a topic so that I can cover it for you in the next video. Thank you.